Welcome back to Research Method Catch Up, where we're exploring the hypothesis. What we're going to cover in this session is the different types of hypothesis, a little bit of an assessment of your learning so far, and some practice writing for hypotheses. OK, so let's just do a quick recap from last session. We've got the directional hypothesis that says there's going to be a difference and specifies the direction of that difference. A non-directional that says there's going to be a difference but doesn't specify the direction of that difference. And then we've got a null hypothesis that says there's not going to be a difference. Now, if you haven't done already, just next to question two on the worksheet, just ensure that you've got the right definition of directional and non-directional in there because that's going to help you with the next task so you might want to pause the video here and this is the task so we've got five different hypotheses here on the screen these are also in your booklet next to question three next to each one you either write D or ND depending on whether it's a directional or a non directional hypothesis you might find it helpful to highlight certain words in the answer to help you decide so pause the video here have a go at that task and come back for the answers let's take a look at the answers then first one there will be a significant increase in the number of food related words correctly recalled by the participants who are hungry in comparison with those who are not hungry now, hopefully you've got for that one directional because the word significant increase is used. Number two, there will be a significant difference in the number of food related words correctly recorded for participants who are hungry in comparison with those who are not hungry. That's a non-directional hypothesis. So that's actually a non-directional hypothesis of the one before. Number three. Male drivers will drive at a lower speed than women drivers on their way back to work. So again, we've got a directional hypothesis because the speed, the lower speed is specified, the direction of the results. Four, there will be a difference in the amount of money that is spent in retail in December compared to June. That's a non-directional hypothesis. We've got that statement of there will be a difference, but not what that difference is going to be. And then five, children under 10 years old will have a different quality of sleep than children who are over 10 years old. So again, a non-directional hypothesis there. It's saying that the quality of sleep will be different, but hasn't specified in what way it will be different. Next thing we're going to do is a bit of practice in terms of rewriting. So you've got three non-directional hypotheses. Your job is to change them into directional hypotheses. So these are also in your booklet next to question four. So there's a space underneath to rewrite those hypotheses. So you can pause the video here. OK, so the first one, animals that are carnivorous will have different sleeping behaviours than animals that have a meat free diet. The directional version of that might be animals that are carnivorous will sleep less than animals that have a meat free diet. So I'm explaining clearly the direction there in terms of the sleep pattern. Next one. We started with there will be a difference in the amount of money that is spent in retail in December compared to June. And then we change it to a directional by saying there will be more money spent in retail in December compared to June. So again, stating what the direction is. And for three, children under 10 years old will have a different sleep quality of children under over 10 years old becomes children under 10 years old will have a better quality of sleep than children who are over 10 years old. So again, we're specifying the direction there. Now we're going to switch it and do it the other way. So you've got three hypotheses that are directional and you're going to change them into non-directional hypotheses. There's space there in your booklet next to question five for you to have a go at this. So let's take a look. So we started with people who live in hotter countries spend more money on skincare products than people who live in colder countries. And we're changing that to non-directional. We're going to say people who live in hotter countries spend different amounts of money on skincare products than people who live in colder countries. Or we could have said there will be a difference in the amount of money spent in skincare between hotter countries and colder countries. 
And we've got football teams in the Premier League receive more red cards in a season than football teams that are not in the Premier League becomes there will be a difference in the number of red cards that Premier League teams will receive in contrast to non-Premier League teams in a season. Then we've got celebrities from reality TV shows earn more money than celebrities who work in journalism becomes there will be a difference in the amount of money reality TV celebrities earn in contrast to journalists. OK, now we're going to do a little bit of work with a piece of research that you might have come across before, which is by Peterson and Peterson. So we've got Peterson and Peterson investigated the duration of short term memory by conducting a laboratory experiment with a sample of 24 psychology students. The students had to recall meaningless three letter trigrams, for example, THG, X, W, V at different intervals, three, six, nine, 12, 15 or 18 seconds. To prevent rehearsal, the students had to count backwards in threes or fours from a specific number until they were asked to recall the letters. Peterson and Peterson found that the longer the interval, the less accurate the recall. At three seconds, around 80% of the trigrams were correctly recalled, whereas at 18 seconds, only 10% recalled. So what I'd like you to do for this is I want you to write me a hypothesis for this particular piece of research. So this space in your booklet next to question six, to do this. OK, now for this one, you can see we've selected a directional hypothesis and we've got participants were able to recall more trigrams correctly when there was a three second interval in contrast to when there was an 18 second interval. So we're just concentrating on that in terms of what our dependent variable is, because that has to appear in the hypothesis. That's how many trigrams they recall correctly and what the IV is, which is the different intervals that we've used. OK, one from attachment this time. So we've got Isabella and Belsky hypotheses that caregiver baby pairs that develop secure attachment relationships would display more synchronous behavior than babies with insecure relationships. Babies were observed at three and nine months and the secure group interacted in a well-timed reciprocal and mutually rewarding manner. In contrast, caregiver baby pairs classed as insecure were characterized by interactions that were minimally involved, unresponsive and intrusive. So write me a hypothesis for this particular study. And the hypothesis that we've got this time is caregiver baby pairs that develop secure attachment relationships will display more synchronous behaviour than babies with insecure relationships. So clearly specifying the direction of the results there. OK, I hope that session was useful and you got a lot of practice in for your hypotheses. Join us in the next session for more on hypotheses.